الرحمن الرحيم ألف لام أحسب الناس أن يتركوا أن يقولوا آمنا وهم لا يفتنون ولقد فتن الذين من صدقوا فلا يعلمن الله الذين صدقوا ولا يعلمن الكاذبين أم حسب الذين يعملون السيئات أن يسبقون ساء ما يحكمون من وهو السميع العليم 
ومن جاهد فإنما يجاهد لنفسه إن الله لغني عن العالمين والذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات لنكفرن عنهم سيئاتهم لنكفرن عنهم سيئاتهم ولنجزينهم محسن الذي كانوا يعملون ووصينا الإنسان بوالديه حسنا وإن جاهداك لتشرك بي ما ليس لك به علم فلا تطعهما إلي مرجعكم فأنبئكم بما كنتم تعملون والذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات لندخلنهم في الصالحين ومن الناس من يقول آمنا بالله فإذا أوذي في الله جعل فتنة الناس كعذاب الله ولئن جاء نصر من ربك ليقولن إنا كنا معكم أوليس الله بأعلم بما في صدور العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته May the peace, blessings and guidance of Almighty Allah be upon you It's my pleasure to welcome you to Perspectives the weekly presentation of the Gayan Islamic Trust With me tonight is Sheikh Abdul Alim once again and we will be discussing the Islamic perspective and approach to calamities how do we deal with it as Muslims. Beloved brothers and sisters, we begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sending blessings upon his noble messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We also make dua and pray for all of our brothers in humanity in various parts of our wonderful country who are adversely affected by the floods. So we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring relief to help the waters to go away so that life can return to normal normalcy for them, insha'Allah. Ameen. Beloved brothers and sisters, we will begin our program by reciting to you a few verses of Al-Quran as it relates to calamities and taking the best and, and the, the blessed, the most blessed approach to it as calamities from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has multiple reasons, insha'Allah. Uh, Sheikh will be discussing this on the program tonight. So I, I will go, I will recite these few verses that are applicable to what we're going to be discussing tonight, insha'Allah. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytanir rajim Bismillahir rahmanir rahim وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوعِ وَنَقْصٍ مِّنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنْفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُمْ مُصِيبَةٌ قَالُوا إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ أُولَئِكَ عَلَيْهِمْ صَلَوَاتٌ مِّن رَّبِّهِمْ وَرَحْمَةٌ وَأُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْمُهْتَدُونَ And this is the translation for it. And we will surely test you with something of fear and hunger and loss of wealth and lives and the fruits but give glad tidings to those who are patient, who, when disaster strikes them, they say, Indeed, we belong to Allah, and indeed to Him shall be our return. Those are the ones upon whom are blessings from their Lord and mercy, and it is those who are the rightly 
guided. So, beloved brothers and sisters, mm -hmm. we would like to first discuss what are the best approach. How do we, sorry, how do we view calamities from an Islamic perspective? Inshallah, Sheikh, welcome to the program. Yes, so right. we begin on this point. This is a very wide topic. So we shall begin on how do we view calamities from an Islamic perspective. Perspective. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. Subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma'allamtana innaka anta al-alim al-hakim. Allahumma alimna ma yanfa'una wa fa'na bi ma'allamtana wa zidna ilma na amala mutaqabbala ya rabbil alameen. Ameen. Respect of you, assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. As one of Muslim guests, may the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be with all of you. Calamities, hardships, difficulties, tests are a reality and a part of life without a doubt. And this is not something that anyone can escape or can flee or run away from. There will be some sort of test inevitably in life uh, that people will have to deal with. And the extent of the tests may vary from one person to another for wisdoms and reasons that God Almighty, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows and which he has explained to us and our Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has also explained to us uh, depending on the level of closeness and attachment connection of the person to God Almighty, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala people will face varying and different levels of tests. So we will uh, reflect on that and we will see that insha'Allah. But the, the underlying fact is that there is no one except that he or she must face some level of adversity, challenges, difficulties, and tests of one sort or another in life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us this in the Holy Quran, as we have seen in the forces that we just recited, definitely we will test you. And this is emphasized with two, uh, in, in, in two ways here. And verily we will definitely test you with something of either fear or hunger. Or decrease and loss of wealth, either wealth in the form of money or cash, or uh, loss of lives, or your fruits and your crops and other properties that you have. But at the end of it, so all of these different and varying forms of tests, these are a reality. Allah says, definitely, we will test you. But then he says, he tells us how we need to respond. He says, وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ So if we know that these calamities are definitely going to come and they are from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then the position or the stance of the believer is to accept the decision of Allah. This is what we call the qadr of Allah. The decree, the divine decree, and decision of God Almighty that He does what He wills. And He tests us according to His wisdom. So once something afflicts us or it comes to us, then we recognize this is the qadr of Allah. How do we respond? He said, وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ Give glad tidings to the patient ones. الَّذِينَ إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُمْ مُصِيبَةً قَالُوا إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ those who, when they are afflicted with hardships, with difficulties, with calamities, they say, to Allah we belong, and to Him we shall return. This is, first of all, saying, whatever we have, it is from Allah. Our life is from Allah, and whatever we have, it is from Allah. We recognize that, first of all. So we need to give thanks to Allah for that. 
wa inna ilayhi raji'un and verily to him we shall return so nothing here is permanent things will come and go life itself is something that uh, eventually will go we will all have to leave this world and we will pass away from it so when we acknowledge that everything is connected to Allah and we are on this journey returning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then we adopt the attitude of accepting the decision of Allah and dealing with it with patience. Mm -hmm. uh, ah, oh, yeah. Go ahead. Um, Sheikh, as you mentioned the meaning of the ayah, um, verily Allah is with those who are patient. So sometimes our viewers might need some more explanation upon this because a person might ask, how can God be with me when my home is three quarters of the way high close to my roof in water and this place so how is it that god is with me all right so let's first go back to that point of, of mentioning or, or which we, in which we mentioned that mm -hmm. everything is by the qadr of allah mm -hmm. everything happens only by the wisdom and the decision of allah mm -hmm. first of all it is god almighty allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who knows uh what tests to place on his servants mm -hmm. and he knows that whatever test he places on his servant his servant has the ability to deal with it mm -hmm. so he will not put a burden on anyone more than he can bear mm -hmm. Allah says Allah will not put a burden on any soul more than he has given that soul the ability to bear mm -hmm. Allah will not put a burden on any soul more than what he has given to the soul. More than what the ability that he has given to that soul to deal with that uh, difficulty or that responsibility or that burden or weight. Whatever it is that Allah puts or, or, or sends our way, rest assured that first of all he knows he has given us the ability to deal with it. Mm -hmm. So here is where we have to go back into the depths of ourselves mm -hmm. to find the suitable response. The response of patience, it starts from within. It starts from the heart mm -hmm. uh, and the mind. We have to recognize that this is the decision of Allah. Recognize that uh, the best way to respond to hardships and difficulties is by turning back to Allah. And the turning to Allah, to, to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala means that we accept his decision and accepting his decision means to be patient with it and then relying upon him for help and relief out of whatever difficulties we face. Mm -hmm. So that is why the verse tells us, وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ Give glad tidings to those who are Patient. Allah says, Ista'inu bis sabri wa salah. Seek help with patience and prayer. With patience and prayer. And one beautiful explanation that I came across is that the reason why patience has been uh, put before prayer in this verse mm -hmm. is because patience stems from within. So before we can actually pray properly for help, uh, we have to adopt the attitude of patience that will allow our prayer to really be uh, suitable in these circumstances. So that, that uh, patience emanates from within and then the prayer will stem from our lips and our limbs. Mm -hmm. right? and, and, and so uh, we start with the patience from within. Uh, as a matter of fact, patience is of different levels and different manifestations. There is the, the patience that stems from within and then it is manifested also on the tongue and on the limbs. Patience stems from within by recognizing that whatever comes our way is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to not be impatient, to not despair, yeah. uh, to not lose hope, mm -hmm. to not uh, turn away and lose faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and say that God has deserted me. Mm -hmm. He has thrown all of this on me because you know he has deserted me no we recognize 
that even though calamities come to us, hardships come to us, they are not a sign that we have been forsaken by Allah, by God Almighty. Because the people who received the greatest tests were the prophets. Mm -hmm. Had it been that calamities are a sign of being forsaken by Allah, mm -hmm. then the, those closest to God Almighty would not have received any tests. Yeah. They would not have faced any hardships. But in contrast, we see that as, as our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, peace be upon him, has told us that those who received the, the most serious and the greatest tests were the Prophets, mm -hmm. were those who were closest to Allah. As he said, أَشَدُّ النَّاسِ بَلَاءً الْأَنْبِيَاءُ وَالصَّالِحُونَ ثُمَّ الْأَمْثَلُ فَالْأَمْثَلُ Those who receive the greatest of tests among people are the prophets and then the pious people and then according to their levels of righteousness. يُبْتَلَ الْمَرْءُ عَلَىٰ قَدْرِ دِينِ A man will be tested according to the strength of his faith. Mm -hmm. فَإِنْ وُجِدَ فِي دِينِهِ صَلَابَةٌ زِيدَ فِي بَلَائِهِ if there is strength in his faith and his calamities will increase, the mm. tests will increase. This is not a sign that God Almighty does not love a person or that he has forsaken a person. Yes, of course, there are uh, punishments that come against oppressive people and against those who turn away from Allah and are involved in forms of iniquity and immorality that is displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is punishment that comes against them as well. But not all calamities are of this sort. Mm -hmm. So calamities are, uh, calamity as a whole, we do not look at calamity from the outset and say, oh, this is punishment. Mm -hmm. This is because God has forsaken me. No. We look first of all uh, and we recognize that calamities are by the qadr, the decree of Allah, and they can come against anyone. No, uh, 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 no matter how close that person is to God Almighty mm -hmm. or how far away from Him that person is. But in all of it is a lesson mm -hmm. for the person who is close to God, for the person who is far away from God. In all of it is a lesson and is a response that makes it into uh, you know, a sort of, uh, of uh, blessing for the, for, for the believer. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a blessing in disguise. Once the person responds to it in a way that is suitable. Mm -hmm. So, uh, coming back to patience, patience starts from within, it emanates from within. Uh, it is not to have, you know, to lose hope and to despair and to become uh, impatient within our hearts, first of all. And then it is not to utter anything that shows uh, displeasure with God Almighty on our tongues. Mm -hmm. When a calamity befalls, we do not utter things like, why is God doing this to me? Mm -hmm. Why is this happening to me? You know, why is God turning away from me? Mm -hmm. you know, we do not utter things that show displeasure with the decision of God Almighty. Mm -hmm. Rather, what does the believer say? The believer says, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun, as the verses teach us. Verily, we are from Allah, to Him we shall return. Everything is from Allah, we are from Allah. Whatever we have is from Allah, and to Him we shall return. Yeah. So we will give an account for how we live in this world. We, we, we uh, you know, respond and we, we uh, rely totally upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in all of our affairs. Yeah. So we say, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. We say, hasbi Allahu wa ni'mal wakil. Allah is enough for me and He is the best disposer of my affairs. Mm -hmm. Allah is enough for me. If He has given me a hardship and a test, it is because He knows that this is good for me. Mm -hmm. He knows I can deal with it and He knows this is good for me. And it is good for me if I respond in a way that is, mm -hmm. uh, that is required. Mm -hmm. And that is with patience as the verses tell us. Um, Sheikh, as we're on this 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 uh, point of patience, I just would like to stitch in something here. Um, as we're emphasizing the point of turning to Allah in these hard times, turning to God in these hard, difficult times. Remember God and know that He He don't He doesn't give someone more than they can bear. Um, there might be some people who are suffering, especially in these floods that are going on in our country. Some people who are suffering, 
they know to themselves that, look, man, I'm a sinner. And I do this wrong and I do that wrong. Now my home is up to the roof in water. I can't turn to God because I'm such a sinner. So Islam teaches that God is merciful, even to the sinner. And in Quran, Allah, um, in the explanation of divorce, do not lose hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was referring actually to a people who used to commit multiple sins. And Allah addressed them as his servants. So this is a time to turn to Allah, whether you're a sinner or whether you're a someone who worships God regularly. Definitely. In, in contrast to that belief, uh, where a person says, well, you know what? Uh, I can't turn to God now. Mm -hmm. This is a sign that God is displeased with me and I can't turn to him at this point in time. Uh, rather, it should be the opposite. This is actually a reminder for us to return to God. Yes. Because as, as, as he tells us in the Holy Quran, وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا إِلَىٰ أُمَمٍ مِّنْ قَبْلِكْ فَأَخَذْنَاهُمْ بِالْبَأْسَاءِ وَالضَّرَّاءِ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَتَضَرَّعُونَ Verily, we have sent messengers to the previous nations before you, O Muhammad, صلى الله عليه وسلم, and we have afflicted them with hardships, with sicknesses, with uh, different forms of calamities. Why? لَعَلَّهُمْ يَتَضَرَّعُونَ so that they may humble themselves, so that they may return. Mm -hmm. Again, Allah says in the Holy Quran, وَلَنُذِيقَنَّهُمْ مِنَ الْعَذَابِ الْأَدْنَى دُونَ الْعَذَابِ الْأَكْبَرِ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْجِعُونَ And verily, we will give them a taste of the lesser punishment before the greater punishment. The lesser punishment is the punishment of this world. Mm -hmm. Before the greater punishment, which is of the hereafter, the punishment of the hellfire. So Allah says, and verily, we will give them a taste of the lesser punishment before the greater punishment. Why? So that perhaps they will return. Mm -hmm. When people are in a state of ease uh, and prosperity and things are going smoothly for them, they become forgetful. It's, it's sometimes it's 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 kind of uh, natural, and uh, you know it fits into the plan of the devil and the shaitan. When things are going easy for us, we become forgetful, mm -hmm. and we we neglect our duties to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and you know we get into a, a lifestyle of complacency, uh, and and sinning and turning away from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala until. We are faced with difficulties and calamities. And then we remember, you know what? I'm supposed to be praying my prayers. I'm supposed to be behaving in a way that is better. I'm supposed to be keeping away from this and keeping away from that. I'm supposed to be honest in my business. And, you know, we begin to remember when calamities afflict us because our hearts become softer at that point in time. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his infinite wisdom, he grant he uh, places calamities upon us sometimes so that we remember mm -hmm. and we take heed and we return to him and good news and glad tidings are for the person who takes heed in a time of calamities if the person in the time of calamities does not reflect and his heart does not soften and he doesn't, uh, you know, awaken from this slumber of heedlessness and return to fulfilling his duties to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but rather continues along a path of negligence and disobedience to Allah, then that is a bad sign. Mm -hmm. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us these reminders. Calamities are actually reminders for us. Mm -hmm. And if we are not taking heed when calamities come our way, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Holy Quran, and this is scary, that you know, after that, the heart of the person becomes hard. So then no matter what happens to him or her, they don't take heed. Mm -hmm. And if that person does not take heed, uh, then eventually goes down a path of total misguidance. Mm -hmm. Will not remember to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, redeem himself or herself. So these calamities are actually blessings in disguise. Allah says, 
عسى أن تكرهوا شيئا وهو خير لكم وعسى أن تحبوا شيئا وهو شر لكم والله يعلم وأنتم لا تعلمون Perhaps you will dislike something something that happens to you which is maybe uh, you know a, a form of difficulty or harm in one way or another you dislike that to happen to you but perhaps that is better for you mm. and there are other things that you would like for yourself but perhaps they are not good for you mm -hmm. you want you know uh, all forms of ease and luxury and uh, the fulfillment of all of your desires and aspirations but God Almighty knows that perhaps that is not good for you Allah knows and you do not know that's what Allah says Allah knows and you do not know. So when calamities afflict us, you know, we would like to see things running smoothly for us. Mm -hmm. But Allah knows that that is perhaps not the best for us because the reality of this life is not one in which everything goes smoothly. There is no Jannah in this world. This world is a life of test. As the poet says, طبعت على كدر وأنت تريدها صفوا من الأقذاء والأكدار ومكلف الأيام ضد طباعها متطلب في الماء جذوة ناري. He says that this life has been created. The nature of this life is that its waters are murky. It is tainted with hardships and difficulties. It is not always smooth sailing. But you want it to be totally smooth and to be free of any hardships and difficulties is not possible. The one who demands that of life, it's as if he is searching for a flame in water. You don't search for a little flame in water because you know that water extinguishes the flame. So you don't search for paradise in this world because it's not possible. This, is, this life is not about paradise. This life is about a test that we are supposed to try to pass so that we can achieve paradise in the hereafter. And part of that test is that we will have to experience hardships and difficulties. So whoever and to, you know, all of our brothers and sisters who are facing hardships and difficulties and calamities mm -hmm. in the form of flooding, in the form of loss of, of livestock, in the form of loss of crops and damage to their property and their homes uh, and everything else, then of course, uh, our sympathies, first of all, go out to all of our brothers and sisters. We are required to support in whatever way we can. Mm -hmm. To be positive agents of change, to try to make a difference in whatever way we can by supporting. Mm -hmm. We feel the pain of our brothers and sisters uh, in humanity and we try to assist in whatever way we can. Mm -hmm. Bring some sort of relief. Uh, and at the same time, we, we offer, you know, uh, condolences so to speak and words of encouragement in uh, you know what we are saying with respect to the reality of calamities the fact that we respond with faith by turning to God Almighty mm -hmm. by uh, accepting that this is the decision of God Almighty and responding with patience and with prayer mm -hmm. we, we turn to Allah we beg him for assistance and for relief in times of need and in times of hardship. And as we say, so long as we respond with patience mm -hmm. and in a positive way and we accept that this is the decision of Allah, we do not rebel against the decision of Allah, mm -hmm. then this becomes a blessing in disguise for us. Yeah. It helps us to become better people in the sight yeah. of Allah. And Sheikh, maybe we should stitch in another piece of advice here to our to ourselves, first of all, and our viewers also, that let us not wait until the calamities and tests and trials come to us to turn to Allah. Let us remember Allah in good things, as the hadith men mentions, ta'arraf ilallahi fi raqawa, ya'rifika fi shidda. Right? That the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, remember Allah when things are going nice, our homes are dry, our condition are, conditions are fine, the sun is out, and we are comfortable. Let us remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Sheikh, you can advise us more upon this. Sure. Well, uh, one of the blessings, so to speak, or, or the positives that we can take out of calamities mm -hmm. is to actually recognize the numerous favors that we normally enjoy mm -hmm. from God Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm -hmm. 
And even when we face difficulties and calamities, there is so much more that we still enjoy that we need to continue to be thankful for. Mm -hmm. So whilst we might experience some harm and some loss where our properties and so on are concerned, there is life. Mm -hmm. There is life. Uh, we still enjoy the air that we breathe and the water that, you know, that we can drink and, and, and we have you know, so many other things that, you know, the functioning of, our, of all of our organs and so on that we must be thankful for because uh, if there is no uh, life in itself, then basically there is nothing else that we can enjoy mm. of, of these bounties. So first of all, life that has been granted to us by God Almighty, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we need to be thankful for this. And so, uh, as they say, you never miss the water until the well runs dry. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when we face calamities in certain areas, then we begin to think, you know what, uh, this is such a great bounty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I never appreciated, I never thought about a few days ago, we visited one of our brothers and uh, he is actually, at this point in time, he has to consume his food through uh, a tube going through his nostril because he's unable to, to, to eat through his, through his mouth. Mm -hmm. uh, so everything basically has to be blended up and then it, it is injected through that tube into his stomach. Uh, and when you look at that, then you begin to appreciate a little bit more this, you know, the, the, the beauty of this ni'mah, this bounty of being able to use our mouths not just to speak and our tongues not just to speak, but to consume our food and everything else and the comfort that we have in doing so. It is only when we miss that or are threatened in one way or another, then we begin to recognize the value of that bounty that we have. Mm -hmm. So everything we have around us, we enjoy so many bounties in so many different ways all around us that we have to continue to be thankful for. So even if something is taken away from us in one area, we have still have so much more yeah. to be thankful for. And we know that famous incident, that story of the man from one of the previous nations who worshipped Allah for basically his whole life, 500 years of his life. And, you know, when all of that ibadah and worship will be taken on the day of judgment and weighed against just one ni'mah, the bounty of his eyesight, it will not be enough to repay for that one single bounty. So, you know, we take so much for granted and we need to uh, reflect on all of these favors. So, uh, at the time of difficulty and hardship, we reflect uh, on you know what we have lost and the fact that in times of ease we are enjoying all of this all of the time and all of the other favors that we continue to enjoy so we do what we turn to Allah and we give thanks mm -hmm. we praise and we thank Allah we continue to pray to him we continue to worship him we continue to strive to be good servants of his we do not worship Allah uh, you know in uh, out of convenience our uh, servitude to Allah and our worship to him is not a matter of convenience it is not just in times of need that we raise our hands and we make dua to Allah yes in times of need uh, we make more dua and more sincere dua and our dua uh, and our invocation is more apt to be answered because we are more sincere at that point in time and the more sincere we are, then the closer our dua is to acceptance, insha'Allah. Mm -hmm. So we make dua at those times, but we don't forget Allah the other times as well. Mm -hmm. We don't turn away from Allah and we say, you know, I'm too busy to pray my salah. Mm -hmm. Because I have my farm and I have my business and I have this and I have that. And when we lose that same business due to a calamity, we turn around and we blame Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we say, why is God doing this to me? Mm -hmm. We are not thankful to Allah when we have things easy. And then when, when, when things become difficult, we blame Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is not a matter of convenience. Our life, our lives, uh, or our, our life in this world is a matter of fulfilling the purpose of our creation, which is to submit to Allah, whatever the circumstances are that we face. And so long as we are submitting to Allah and being patient with difficulties, 
and being grateful for the favors of Allah that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has told us, our affair will always be good. Everything will always be good for us. Whether it's ease, whether it's hardship, whether it's prosperity or it's adversity, uh, we will always be you know, in a state of goodness because we are responding in the way that is required. This is the most important thing that we need to take out of the understanding of calamities, to respond in the way that will make this calamity into a blessing for us. Yeah. If we respond with impatience and with grumbling and with complaining and with blaming God Almighty, there is no good in that. There is no good. We well, listen to this hadith of the Prophet wasallam that tells us, and we all know, we make mistakes. Every single one of us. We commit sins, we make mistakes. Allah tells us in the Holy Quran, وَمَا أَصَابَكَ مِنْ سَيِّئَةٍ فَمِنْ نَفْسِكَ Whatever difficulty or bad comes to you, it is from yourself. It is from yourself. Meaning what? The other verse tells us, وَمَا أَصَابَكُمْ مِنْ مُصِيبَةٍ فَبِمَا كَسَبَتْ أَيْدِيكُمْ وَيَعْفُ عَنْ كَثِيرٌ Whatever calamity befalls you, it is because of what you earn with your own hands. And yet we forgive much. This is not saying that, well, oh, some are affected. It means they are greater sinners than the others who are not affected. No, as we mentioned before, people are tested you know, and in some calamities according to the levels of their deen. Mm -hmm. The stronger they are, the stronger they have, in, uh, the, the faith they have, then the greater their tests. Mm -hmm. As we mentioned before, that the greatest, those who were tested the most were the prophets. Mm -hmm. You know, if some have been tested with a calamity more than others, this is not to say that some are better than others mm -hmm. or some are worse than some. No, we are all tested here. In, in the case of floods, some areas are flooded more than others. It is a test for all of us. It is a test for those who are directly affected to be patient, to respond with patience. And it is a test for the others around to respond positively to them and to support them in whatever way they can. So for them, it may be more patience. For the others, it is more gratitude by sharing. Showing and exhibiting gratitude to God Almighty by sharing with those who have been affected. All of us are being tested. Mm -hmm. Allah says, We test you with harm and with good. We test you with bad and with good. It is all a test. Mm -hmm. And to us you will return. So this is not a sign that some are worse off than mm -hmm. others. As I said, the, the direct calamities facing some may actually be a greater blessing for them because as the Prophet ﷺ has told us that uh, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants good for a servant, he hastens some of his punishment in this world in the form of calamities. Mm -hmm. He hastens some of his punishment in this world in the form of calamities. So for the believer, we look at difficulties and calamities whilst we try to avoid you know, hardships as much as possible. Yeah. We look at difficulties and calamities as a sign that, look, this is expiation. This is wiping out some of my sins. And the other part of the hadith says, but if Allah does not want good for that person, he leaves his sins for the hereafter until he repays them there. May Allah save us from that. Mm -hmm. We do not want to be in a state in which we are repaid for our sins in the form of punishment on the day of judgment. Mm -hmm. We would prefer that we face difficulties and hardships in this world and our sins are expiated and wiped out in this world so that, mm -hmm. as the Prophet ﷺ says, mm -hmm. the person who faces calamities in this world in his property, in his wealth, in his wealth, in himself, in his children. Uh, he continues to face one calamity after another and they continue to wipe out his sins until he reaches Allah and he has no sin left. Mm -hmm. We would like that this is the state that we reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in, that we face tests in this world and we deal with them and respond to them uh, in the positive way and inshallah, they wipe out our sins so that we reach Allah and we are sinless and we don't have to face the punishment of the And Sheikh, didn't the Prophet Sallallahu told us um, about how wonderful are the affairs of the believers? As, uh, as, uh, as we hinted to that hadith before as well, yeah. that we are either 
dealing with situations of ease mm-hmm. or situations of hardship. Mm-hmm. Situations of ease, we are required to show gratitude. Situations of hardship, we are required to, to show patience. And the believer is always uh, between a state of gratitude and patience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so long as he is responding in this way, then this is the best for him. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, because he's being rewarded for his gratitude and also rewarded for his patience. And uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has told us, patience is a blessing from Allah. Mm-hmm. No one has been given a gift from Allah that is better than patience. Mm-hmm. No one has been given a, a gift that is better than patience. And he says, Inna, and Allah tells us, Verily, the patient ones will be given the reward without any limits on the Day of Judgment. There are no limits to the reward of the patient person on the Day of Judgment. Uh, when we exhibit patience in this world, uh, in, in, in different forms. Whatever forms we have to uh, endure and exhibit patience, the rewards are limitless with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment. So let us not uh, despair. Let us not become depressed because we are faced with calamities one after another. Uh, there are farmers who every single rainy season, they, their crops become flooded. Mm-hmm. You know, livestock are affected, their crops are affected, their livelihoods are affected every single rainy season. And, and people ask the question, well, you know, why is this that I have to face all of these calamities one after the other? As we are saying, there is a positive side to it if we respond in a way that is, that is uh, required. First of all, uh, we know that Allah will not put a burden on us more than we can bear. And while we try our best to alleviate the flooding and, and, and those, uh, whoever has to do whatever they need to do in order to, to alleviate the flooding that this is required. Mm-hmm. Then at the same time, after making whatever effort we can make, we know that everything still is in the hands of Allah. Mm-hmm. And Sheikh, whilst we are looking around for those who are suffering in this way, that you know they're looking around and looking at their dead cattle and dead livestock and so on, Right and damaged property, and so they're looking. It's obvious in front of their eyes. Um, Allah says that verily the help of Allah is near. Right, definitely. Once we are responding with patience, mm-hmm. and we are accepting the qadr and the decree of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala with faith, with iman in Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, with belief in Allah Subhanahu wa Taala then inshallah good will definitely come out of it. Mm-hmm. And ease will come out of it. Allah says, إِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَى Verily, with hardship comes ease. Not, mm-hmm. not, he doesn't say after hardship. He says, with hardship comes ease. So even as we are experiencing certain hardships and we are relying upon Allah and being patient, and putting our trust in Him, Ease is coming as well, inshallah. This is the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we have iman and we respond with, uh, you know, with, with, with true faith and sincerity uh, in Him, inshallah. Yeah. And Sheikh, you made the point not so long ago that this is also a time to gain blessings for those who can be, uh, who are able to assist the suffering ones. Um, I know that the Ghan Islamic Trust is very much involved in rendering assistance to our suffering brothers in humanity. Um, tell us a little bit about the effort whilst we encourage our brothers and sisters out there to support this effort. Shabba. Well, uh, as I mentioned, we have to, we are required to, it's our obligation to mm-hmm. respond uh, in a positive way to try to see, uh, to do what we can for those uh, who are affected. Of course, it is not easy. Uh, to access all of the seriously affected areas. It's it's more difficult to uh, access some of these areas. So some areas where uh, it it is more accessible, then inshallah we can render direct assistance and we have been doing so and we will inshallah continue to do so. And in other areas where we may not be able to access, then of course, 
you know, we support the efforts of the CDC as well mm -hmm. so that they will reach out to areas that we cannot reach out to. Mm -hmm. uh, and we are hoping that with this two-pronged approach, we can be able to, uh, you know, at least positively touch the lives of some people uh, by the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, you know, uh, make a difference for them in, mm -hmm. in whatever little way we possibly can. Of course, uh, whatever we do, it is only a little uh, a, a very uh, you know uh, small uh, actually uh, little effort that we can make mm -hmm. but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, is the one ultimately who uh, grants his assistance and his help we do whatever little we can mm -hmm. and that little gesture inshallah uh, is something that we, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept and to, to you know to help to make a difference in the lives of those who are affected. We know that there are many others out there who are making effort and, and, and very commendable efforts are being made throughout the country mm -hmm. and even from the diaspora uh, sending you know, the assistance in one sort or, or, or one way or another. Mm -hmm. And inshallah, we hope that all of this put together will bring uh, you know, tremendous relief to our brothers and sisters who are being affected throughout uh, our country. So we encourage our brothers and sisters to also be a part of these efforts mm -hmm. and to assist in whatever way we can. These are calamities when, when we face difficulties and trials and calamities. Then, uh, of course, we have to exhibit our, our sympathy uh, with those who are being affected. And uh, we, we try our best, you know, to, to show that we, uh, we feel some of what they are feeling mm -hmm. and we support them just as we would like that if we were in a situation like that, that we also be supported by our brothers and sisters. And, uh, you know, if I may add a point here, it is, you know, sometimes it is definitely counterproductive to exhibit negativity in times of crisis and calamities like this. Mm -hmm. And when I say negativity, I mean just throwing blame at one another. Well, who is responsible for the flooding? Who is this? And who is that? There is no good in any of that. To sit back and look at people suffering and just throw blame at, at others mm -hmm. as to who should be doing what and who is responsible for what, that will not make a difference in the lives of those who have been affected. To make a positive difference, we have to go out there and we have to try to do what we can to bring some relief to the people. And we are all part of this. Uh, we all share in, in, in these uh, in the plight of, of the people. Uh, this is all of, this is our country together and we need to work together, everyone, in whatever way we can, in a positive way to make a difference and to try to alleviate the, the hardships and the difficulties in the lives of people. Yes, and our viewers, we should always know that all of what are happening around us, it is by the, the will of God it is happening. And it is happening for a reason. In these times, we should be patient, as Sheikh mentioned. This is a time for lots and lots of prayers. Lots and lots of prayers. And also, may I add, this is also a time for self-evaluation. Look at our attitudes that we portray towards the bounties that God has given us. And he can take it back anytime. We can be the most wealthy from amongst the most wealthy, uh, wealthy people, but God can take away that at any time. So this is a time that we should evaluate ourselves, look at the way we live, and try to better our lives. And we, we are always conscious that everything that we possess, it came from God and to Him it will return. And in this time of loss, we advise you also, we advise ourselves also, that we should add to our prayers, O oh Allah, O oh God, replace what I have lost with that which is better. You've seen it in the past. People have had so much and they would have lost all and more. And when they, when they would have gotten the blessings of God again, it is even more overwhelming than what they would have had before. So this is a time for connection to God. This is a time for faith and prayers and patience. Our final words for tonight are praise be to Allah, the Lord of all the worlds. 
uh, thank you for being on the program here yes, and we thank you for your beneficial advices too. Um, and our final words for tonight are praise be to Allah, the Lord of all the worlds. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace be unto you. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. قال الذين كفروا للذين آمنوا اتبعوا سبيلنا ولنحم خطاياكم وما هم بحاملين من خطاياهم من شيء إنهم لكاذبون ولا يحمل الناس قالهم وأثقال ولا يسألن يوم القيامة عما كانوا يفترون ولقد أرسلنا نوحا إلى قومه فلبث فيهم ألف سنة إلا خمسين عاما فأخذهم الطوفان وهم ظالمون فأنجيناه وأصحاب السفينة وجعلناها وجعلناها آية للعالمين وإبراهيم إذ قال لقومه اعبدوا الله واتقوا ذلكم خير لكم إن كنتم تعلمون إن ما تعبدون من دون الله أوثانا وتخلقون إفكا إن الذين تعبدون من دون الله لا يملكون لكم رزقا فابتغوا عند الله الرزق واعبدوه واشكروا له Shukran ya Rabbi shukran Hadayta qalbi shukran Nawarta darbi shukran Shukran ya Ya munzil al-Qur'an Ya khaliq al-insan Ya Rabbi ya Rahman Shukran ya Rabbi Ya munzil al-Qur'an Ya khaliq al-insan Ya Rabbi ya Rahman Shukran ya شكراً يا ربي شكراً هديت قلبي شكراً نورت دربي شكراً شكراً يا رب
شكرا يا رب شكرا يا رب يا خالق